this video, I'm going to be talking about how do I practice octaves on the violin and how you should approach octaves on the violin. Stick around to the end of the video. Hi there, my name is Eric, I'm a violinist. Thanks for coming across my YouTube channel. I do violin tips, how-to tutorials, just like this one. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notifications. When new videos come out, you get notified straight in your inbox. Like perfect fifths and perfect fourths, the, an octave is also a perfect interval. You know, you go from one part of the scale to the other part of the scale, and you try to do that as in tune as possible on the violin. A perfect exercise to do this is in the Kreutzer second etude. However, we're just gonna talk about the mechanics, what I do to approach octaves, and how you can find success in playing octaves in tune. So let's start out the conversation with what is an octave? An octave is when uh, you have one note from like in the Western diatonic scale, you have one note and the interval is eight notes apart. So the top note is eight notes apart from the bottom note. So for instance, if I'm gonna play a C here in third position, then eight notes, the, the eight note difference. And so that is my octave, my C octave here. But how do we achieve an in-tune octave? Well, first of all, you have to make sure that your hand position is nice and solidified. And you might notice that my knuckles are above my fingerboard as well as my fingers. As a violinist, you wanna make sure that the fingers are coming from the top to the bottom, never from the bottom up. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that when the fingers are below the fingerboard like this, you're gonna have a very tough time in reaching a good intonation, especially when you're playing octaves. So what I always recommend to my students, whether they're young uh, advanced students to adult students, you wanna make sure that the knuckles are above the fingerboard. Now, once you have set up your hand above the fingerboard, we're just gonna go ahead and play our A, the first finger on the G string. And notice how, again, how all my fingers on my left hand are nice and curvy. What I also like to explain to my students is that you want to have some kind of finger box over here to create strength in your finger without having to press so hard, especially like if your knuckles are too high, for instance, if, you're, if they're right here, then you could actually have a lot of strain in your upper forearm closer to your wrist. So you definitely want to avoid that. You want the knuckles again to be high, but not too high, so that way the fingers can go from the top to the bottom. So that way they're really easy to really maneuver. So for instance, again, the and you would practice the octave in this sort of manner. You would always go from the bottom to the top, just because the frequencies and lower strings are um, a lot easier to tune than they are in the upper strings. So you always want to tune from the bottom up. So again, we do and then you can do this in all in first position. Hmm. Also might notice that my hand is never flat like this. Uh, what, what I always explain to my beginners is you wanna make sure that the back of the hand is always facing your audience. Well, why is that? It's so that way when they do approach octaves later on in their violin careers, is that the fourth finger is hovering over the fingerboard because you don't wanna play the octave, the fourth finger being out here. The distance between out here and the fingerboard is quite a distance. And that's what Kreutzer number two does so well. It helps shape the hand frame so the fourth finger is always in place in its, in its position. As I said before, an octave is a perfect interval. So you have to make sure that the frequencies line up between the bottom note and the upper note. So let's give an example of what that sounds like. So I'm just gonna do an open D octave and then third finger on A. And you may notice if you have a good ear, that the frequencies are pretty much aligned, where you don't hear any sort of interference. Now let's put the third finger a little bit higher, like a couple millimeters. You might notice that we're starting to get some interference. And the difference actually is from here to there. It's, it's not a lot, like if you take a look at it, but in violin land, that makes a huge difference. So whenever we're tuning, again, from the bottom to the top, and as
as you're tuning, always make sure that you set the finger first and then you play because you don't want to get into the habit of moving your finger up and down, for instance, to get to figure out the note. You don't want that because you're training your hand in a certain way and we want to make sure that we, as in the words of Dr. Suzuki, finger, bow, then go. So let's try applying this in the octave exercise. So we have finger, then bow, and go. And you do this pretty much all across the board. And that's a really good uh, violin tip. Um, that's a bonus tip that I wanted to share with you is that you want to make sure you place the finger in the desired location before you actually pull the bow. It helps your intonation, it helps your agility. So when, when your hand is set, you are gonna achieve more success. Talked about octaves in first position, but what happens to the octaves as you go higher? What, ha what about third position, fourth, fifth, sixth? Well, the space between the first and fourth finger, or if you're doing fingered octave, it would be like the second and fourth and the first and the third, although that could be an entirely different video. For the sake of this video, we're just doing first finger and fourth finger. So the physical distance between the first and the fourth finger is actually wider than it is in fourth and fifth position. And that's just the nature of the string uh, and the nature of the violin. The whole steps and the half steps shrink as you go up in position on the violin. And I'm pretty much any string instrument, although I can't comment on bass because I'm not a bass player, but I'm pretty sure like on violin, viola, even on cello, I'd say that the, that the intervals, the, the distance between the intervals shrink as you go up the fingerboard. The approach in getting the intonation down is the same. You go from the bottom string to the upper string. So let's see if you can do a nice G. So even then I have to adjust a little bit, but let's go ahead and this will be like a small little workshop right now where I know it wasn't quite in tune, but I'm, I'm setting the finger, I'm confident with that finger. Then let's put the fourth finger down here, see if it's gonna be the, and then let's try both. So there was a little bit of interference. Let's go ahead and maybe adjust the fourth finger a little bit lower. And literally the distance is from here to there. It's such a small difference. So don't get discouraged if you don't get it right away. So let's try it one more time. Now I might've done it too, too low. Let's split the difference a little bit. So. And of course, when you go higher, it is a little bit more difficult, but with a lot of practice, you will get it, I can assure you. So to recap, finger, bow, then go. Make sure when you're tuning your octaves, you're, they, these are perfect intervals, so you have to make sure that the frequencies on both strings are matching, so that way you don't get any interference. And you wanna tune from the bottom string to the upper string. Because intonation-wise, you're gonna achieve a lot more success if you go from the bottom up rather than up uh, top to bottom so much for coming across this video. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. It helps me out as a content creator to provide more videos for you. And please make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notifications. Again, I wanna create more violin videos for you to help you out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.